Hey folks, welcome to the first weekly focus video for MH510. In the spring of 2024, this week we're going to be talking about history, historiography, and historians. But before we do that, got to have the update from the compound. Just for those of you, um, I know that some of my former students watch these over and over again. But for those of you who um, haven't been with me, um, we live in southwest Missouri outside of a small town called Neosho. We've got a whopping 1.75 acres, not enough for horses, not enough for cattle, and my wife doesn't want pigs. Um, we've got rabbits, and we're talking about chickens, but I don't think we're going to do that until next year. We were thinking about it this spring, but... We've decided we've got some travel coming up and everything else, and it's just not good to start the, the, the chickens out that way. We also have a number of raised beds. We raise cucumbers, beans, raspberries, and rhubarb, share with our neighbors, and in turn, our neighbors share with us things like uh, peas and um, tomatoes and, you know, whatever. We just kind of share back and forth. Um, we're sort of preppers, meaning we've got some food stocked up. We've got some medical stuff stocked up. We've got extra uh, of our uh, prescription meds. We've got yeah, some things at the property, keep an eye on things. We've got kind of a very informal mutual assistance group with a number of our neighbors. We've just got new neighbors moving in behind us that we think we are really going to enjoy having back there. They've got 12 acres, and they are running cattle um, and chickens and rabbits, and they've got uh, a whole lot of raised beds that were already there, and they're putting in more. Um, so that's the compound and the stuff we have to do to take care of stuff around here. Um, this weekend, we're staying in. We're not going out um, anywhere other than um, runs for shopping and whatnot. But um, typically we go every other week or so up to Kansas City and see two of our daughters that live up there. But this weekend we're staying home, um, relaxing. I'll be calling you all tomorrow on Saturday um, and just saying hi to you. So um, that's the update from the compound. Uh, everything's good. Uh, for those of you who have seen some of the ones from last term, I am feeling much better and Lisa is recovering as well. Okay, enough with the compound. That one's kind of a long update from the compound. But um, let's jump into our discussion questions for the week. Um, but before we do that, I've got to tell you a little bit of other stuff. Be sure you watch video number two, Doc on Discussions in the Instructor Office, before you answer the DQs. Really, you ought to watch all of the numbered videos and take a look at the rubrics and whatnot. If you have not received your books yet, do not panic. Besides access on Red Shelf, um, what I would like you to do is some web research instead of the assigned readings if you've got physical books coming and you can't access Red Shelf. Only if you don't have the assigned readings, you can start with historytoday.com archive head-to-head -head, what history. And here at the University of Northern Florida, uh, Clifford, Craft, whatever link is here, explore some other good reputable sites such as uh, Open Edu, uh, Open Learn, History, the Arts, History, what history being historian for more in-depth information. Again, it's kind of a shortened version of the URL. And you can follow that with something from Princeton University on historiography. And this, what is historiography on the subject of historiography itself? But follow that up with some additional research, both on the subject of his, historiography, but also the history of history. All right, so what is history? What is historiography? And what is the relationship between the two? Hint. Think about the question one of the authors might define terms one way, while another might define terms in a different way. Be sure you define terms yourself 
and can defend your answer. Don't just accept someone's statement at face value. That's not synthesis. That's regurgitation. How long is the field of history? And then second question, how has the field of history broadly changed since 1850? And is this a good thing or a bad thing for the field? Here, remember to focus on the field of academic history and be sure to think over the entire period. From the readings, identify three or four of what you think are the most significant changes and explain why you think those are the most important. Okay, now, getting down into the nitty gritty of each question. For the first question, what is history, what is historiography, and what is the connection between the two, you will need to think about the past, evidence of the past, interpretation, the processes historians employ, and the products historians produce. So some questions for you. Is the past the same as history? Can we know the entirety of the past or history? How do historians learn about or know the past? Think about academic history as a conversation. When a historian writes, it is useful, is it useful rather, when a historian writes, is it useful to just repeat what others have said? How does a historian's worldview, Weltanschauung, perspective, belief system affect how they write history? How do the conditions of our own times affect how we see the past, what we ask of it? What do we call all of the stuff written about the Battle of Gettysburg or the civil rights movement or post-World War II decolonization? For the second question, you will need to think about the broad changes across the entirety of the field of history that have occurred between the early 19th century and the present time. How has who writes history, what sorts of history do they write, and what are the questions they ask, what methodologies do they apply, and who do they write about changed in big, broad terms from, say, 1850 or thereabouts, a little bit earlier than that maybe, and today. Who wrote history before 1850? Who writes history now? How did folks learn to write history before 1850? How do historians become qualified to write history now? How did folks value history before 1850? And how do historians value history now? What did most folks write about before 1850? What sort of topics are written about now? Who did historians write for before 1850? And don't buy into the patronage argument. If you're getting grants from foundations or government agencies or whatever, you're a, you're, 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 you've got patronage. So don't buy into the, oh, they just wrote for the kings. And who do historians write for now? Week one reminders, don't forget to start your primary reply by restating the question. I wanna make sure that you know in your head as you write that you're answering that question. Then give us a short, direct, one or two sentence answer to the question posed in the requirement. This is your thesis. It should be a miniature outline of what you're going to tell me. Then expand, explain, and defend your answer with evidence, see below, from multiple readings. See here for the proper format, citation format, Chicago Manual of Style, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Also, be sure you review the videos from numbered one to seven, and then I'd look at the rubrics one as well, just to keep yourself up to date. Okay, so with that, I will say y'all stay safe, take care, and I'll see you around the campus. Bye-bye.